Let's be honest. Let's not say that none of us saw that coming after the performances in the last few games. We could have lost really against Norwich. We could have really lost against Newcastle. We could have probably drawn against Burnley. But tonight there, 1-0 defeat to Wolves. And it was a, a complete and systematic loss. It wasn't like they snuck a goal at the end. Matinho coming up just after United pumped the goal. No, Wolves had four shots on target against United in that first half. And they had in total combined in the four games against like City, Norwich and whoever else combined. Wow! It was a performance where when you looked at the start in 11, you're all like, oh, wow, Phil Jones. He's going to embarrass us. Every single other player, Varane, I thought played well. Phil Jones, I thought played okay. De Gea, I thought played okay. Mason Greenwood, I was a bit surprised why he was taken off. Maybe he had a niggle. I'm giving benefit of the doubt there. Just like a poor tactical decision. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is the Ralph Radnick honeymoon period over. Where is that pressing system I saw against Crystal Palace in the first 45 minutes? What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Is it a classic case of chicken or the egg? Is it the players or is it the manager? Is it the system or is it the individuals? Is it both? Is it everything? Is it all of it? I don't know. But what I saw there today against Wolves was embarrassing. The players can't string two passes together. The players can't do the utter basics. Utter, utter. Look, I swear to God, look like competition winners. And wan tackling himself when trying to put the cross in. Decision-making from Jaden Sancho was woeful. The entire game midfield, we had no midfield. McTominay and Matic. Look at McTominay's performances in the last two games. Well, talk about yo-yo. Jeez, look fantastic there against Burnley. And tonight, absolutely non-existent. Banned for the game against Aston Villa, and rightly so after that performance. Jesus, what, you're looking at man of the... Who was our man of the match there? Apparently, Phil, of course it was Phil Jones, man. Genuinely, that is utterly appalling that a player who hasn't played a Premier League game in two years, a player who has had such mental struggles, physical struggles, every sort of struggle for years and years, and the scapegoat, I was, I mean, I've, I've scapegoated Phil Jones plenty, you have too. All of us, a lot of us have given up on him. He goes in and puts in that sort of battling performance tonight whilst all of our other players, well, not all of them, but the overwhelming majority of our other players just let the game pass them by. If I had enough if I had enough power in my lungs right now, I'd probably be shouting louder. I don't get what I just what I've just seen there. What as I said, the honeymoon period is over for Alf Radnick now. Where was that system? Where is that system? It's like I was watching that first half, and it wasn't as if the players yeah, no, the players just weren't pressing. And I know the pressing system isn't all about a chaotic press, just everybody pressing constantly. They're looking for triggers. And those triggers will then start the press. Even with Cavani up front there, we played in a 4 triple two formation. But when you play with the 4 triple two, if you compare, the, compare that to what we were playing at the start against Crystal Patterson compared to what we're playing now, you're playing Mason Greenwood and Sancho there now. They're operating really wide. Against Crystal Palace, you saw Bruno playing a bit narrower. And then because we didn't play as narrow today, we just had no player there in the middle of the pitch. Nobody really knew what they were doing. Nobody had any sort of outlet. We had no midfield there. It's absolutely zero surprise that the goal came from Joe Moutinho. Wow, Moutinho, whatever. Moutinho. On the edge of the box with a late run there. Ruben Neves, I thought. But both of them controlled the middle of the pitch. But everywhere. They just controlled everywhere. Wolves, very, very tactically astute. They knew what they were doing. Chance after chance after chance in that first half. And we had no answer. We had no midfield to protect the defence. We had no attack to protect the midfield. We had a defence which was in the centre of it playing quite well. Luke Short and Aaron wan I don't think, played particularly well. David De Gea made a couple of saves. <clears throat> but that's a, that, that was a performance where... Yeah, utter basics were not correct. But if we're being completely honest, it's a bit of a continuation of problems that we've seen in the last few games. As I said, that 3-1 against Burnley, I thought we had a decent amount of control in that first half. But Burnley, if they were more clinical, would have certainly caused us more problems. A lot of people were saying, Sam, don't get so hyped up about McTominay. It's because Burnley had no midfield that was pressing against him. I said, yeah, cool, but he still played well today. Ooh, absolutely cack, absolutely abysmal. I could have played better. Probably could have. Wow. Hey, man, that's confusing me. That's left me in a right. I don't know. That's that's not the sort of performance, in my opinion. I'm looking at this I'm looking at this team going, ah, oh, you know what? If Scott McTominay didn't play and Fred, then it would have been completely different. I think that overall performance from that team was just a collective 
collectively poor performance. And I'm being really polite there when I'm saying poor. It was an abysmal performance from the entire team, apart from individuals. As I say, Phil Jones came out with his head held high. Well done, Phil Jones, man. But as I said, a player who's been scapegoated, who has been the, the, the butt of the jokes for so long. I, I truly, it, it's truly staggering and embarrassing that he can put together that sort of composure and professionalism and desire in his first game back in the Premier League in two years compared to what these players can do in week in, week out. It goes to show the mental, mate, it's a mentality. And I'm sorry, like, I know that, that this Ragnik system isn't uh, complete. And I know that the coaching staff still needs to get their teeth into it. And X, Y, Z, and I know that the four triple two is not seemingly perfect like that right now. I'm pointing my fingers firmly at the players, man. <coughs> I'm pointing right at the players. Seriously. I don't care what you say about the system, or what you say about the pressing style, what you say about the formation, X, Y, Z. It doesn't mean that you can't do the utter basics together. And when the utter basics are not there, it does not matter who your manager is. It doesn't matter what formation you're playing in. You will simply not be able to put forward a coherent game of football for a 90-minute game. United, when Bruno came on, we looked a bit different. Of course, we looked different. Bruno came on, played in the middle, came on for Greenwood, questionable. But it came on for Greenwood. And then we had someone operating in these spaces here. It was a little bit too bare there, wasn't it? But the idea of the 4 triple two, in my opinion, is these two number 10s, they stay a little bit more narrow, leaving it for the fullbacks, Wan-Bissaka and Luke Shaw to offer the width. That's how the 4 triple two works. Instead, if you play the 4 triple two with Jaden Sancho and Greenwood playing really wide, there's too much space in the middle. There's nobody to, for McTominay and Matic to give the ball to. It's all too disconnected. Man United there are making me more ill. I think I'd rather continue having COVID than watch that again. Wolves deserved it. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Wolves utterly, utterly good for those three points there. And Manchester United, as I said, if we're being completely honest, we looked at that Newcastle game. We could have lost that game. We looked at that Norwich game. We could have lost that game. We looked at that Burnley game. We could have easily been one or two goals more down in that first half. And then today, there it was a bit of a culmination of everything we've seen before. What changes that? Let me know what you think in the, in the comments here, because we all know this squad on paper. They should be playing far better. Look at, the, look at the players we've got on your team there. They're just not doing it. And I'm sorry, but this is now the second manager that's played under this squad, and I'm seeing continuations of the same problems. And the fact that I saw such a different such a different performance, level of application and everything in that game against Crystal Palace for the first 30 minutes. Why can I not see that now? What is Tell me what is different. And don't tell me it's just a new manager bounce. That's bullshit. New manager bounces don't last half an hour. What is it? Do they just not want to put the work in? Is it the fact that they're, they're, they've now got a manager who maybe they can't get away with things and they're throwing their toys out the pram? But for me personally, I'm firmly looking at these players. I believe in Ralph Ragnick and the idea that he is a man who can help this club and squad be better than they were before he came in. Now, of course, he's going to make mistakes. Maybe that 4 triple 2 isn't going to be the right system to use with these players. Maybe playing Jaden Sancho and Greenwood on the left and the right there isn't the right thing to do. I don't know. <coughs> but I also don't know what the solution is now. Because I can't see at Manchester United going into the January transfer window now, signing one or two players, and all of a sudden we're playing wonderful football. Wow, look at that. All the problems are solved. They seem deeper than that. They seem more entrenched. They seem more part of the culture, if you want to call it that, than anything to do with any sort of individual who's causing problems inside that team. Collectively, they're all contributing to the issue. And of course, the manager has to be contributing to that too. I want to see more from... He's playing, what are they doing in the training ground, man? Where's the system? Where's the press? Why are we not pressing? Is it a case that they won't press? Is it a case that they can't press? What is it? I'm depressed. That's the only pressing we got in that game so far. And it was abysmal, man. As I said, it was coming. We look at, we're being completely honest with ourselves. We look at the Norwich and the Newcastle game and say, well, you know, we, uh, we're a bit lucky there. We we're a bit lucky there. We weren't unlucky there at all. Wolves, completely good for it. Completely good for those three points. They absolutely deserved it. We deserved that, that defeat. And is it going to be a defeat that causes any sort of significant change? I'll be honest, I don't think so, because otherwise we would have seen maybe significant change from the Norwich and the Newcastle games. Of course, caveat of all of that is COVID has massively disrupted Ragnick's plans so far. But we can't use that excuse anymore. 
And there's no excuses for that game. There's no excuses for any player being outperformed there by Phil Jones. Phil Jones should have been given... Phil Jones could have had the most basic average performance there. And we, 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 we all have said, ah, oh, fair play. You know, Phil Jones coming in only because Maguire's injured and Bayer's not available and Lindelof's got COVID. Ah, oh, fair play, Jones. He came in and did a job. Not only did he do a job, he made everyone else look abysmal and embarrassing in a game where he should have just coasted through it. Phil Jones roasted the top. Now, that is fair play to Jones, but embarrassing for everybody else. And it's a situation that United find it. How do, what, where do we turn here? We sat the manager. No, we don't sat the manager. But what happens? How do you get more out of these players if you're Ralph Randnick? What is the problem? Where does it lie? The system, the players, everything together? I don't know. You need to let me know in the comments below. But as I said, if I had more strength in my voice, I probably would have shouted a bit, a bit louder at that because that was... <coughs> That's disgusting. <laughs>